Isaac. I'm a 19-year-old filmmaker from Perry Sound, Ontario, Canada. And this is a story about why my friend Josiah and I decided to wake up at 5.30 in the morning on Monday, September the 5th, and drive 250 kilometers into northern Ontario. Sailing. We are just about to embark into the uh, north channel of Lake Huron. Um, it's a very windy day, however, 34 years of experience should get us through. We know where the quiet waters are. Long may you make you draw. My great uncle Ted has been sailing the north channel of Lake Huron for over 30 years of his life and he always loves taking friends and family out in his boat, not only to experience the beauty of the place, but the rich history as well. Today, it was our turn. Joe and Ted and Isaac are about to embark into the uh, pristine waters of North Channel. Hey yo, it's 2011, and it's a new year, but the same problems still coming through here. See the same old dead is still piling up, with the same old haters trying to rile you up. You got the same old cries from the folks without money, cause the same old guys got their hooks in that honey. Same old crime still being committed, while the same white crime still being permitted. See the same old lies being sold. One of the first things you notice while sailing with Ted is his incredible wealth of knowledge about the history, vegetation, and layout of almost every single island on the North channel and this first became evident to us in his ceremonial presentation of the diamond willow walking stick this much sought after beautifully crafted highly finished personalized diamond willow walking stick i'll put your name on it before you go comes from deep within the bowels of the boreal forest next to the sparkling pristine waters of the north channel it was specifically chosen a year ago just for you growing in a deep moist area on an island in the overburden accumulated since the last ice age 12,000 years ago. Just next to that diamond willow walking stick was a huge percussion drop stone carried here from Hudson Bay 14,000 years ago when a catastrophic glacial meltwater release occurred sending other rock and debris beneath the ice under great pressure smoothing the rock surfaces you see today just like a giant sandblaster in a, a few hours or days in the fall the stick was peeled leaving some of the bark and then dried slowly to produce the brown orange and white patina so distinctive to a diamond well a walking stick note the ergonomic shape on the grip to provide increased purchase when bearing down on inclined surfaces and uh, to prevent slippage when using your stick in difficult foragings. After drying and sanding, your stick was hefted and trimmed to just the right length and weight and balance. And for lasting quality and a long uh, guarantee, the stick has four coats of the best high gloss UV blocking waterproof varnish that money can buy. A leather strap has been added for your security and safety. The following are a list of uses for your new Diamond Rail walking stick besides uh, general hiking. 
number one, pointing. For pointing out buoys, islands, points, bays, and other distinctive uh, natural features. And excellent for pointing out local flora and fauna. Number two, uh, invaluable when on watch to give the health crucial course information and to avoid shoals. Remember, there's rocks everywhere in the North Channel. Poking and stirring the campfire when looking for animals in the fire. Caution, remove the rubber tip. As, the, as an attention holder and gesticulating device when giving stump speeches, remember to choose a rock or a stump well clear of your audience and use the leather strap for safety and do not use in the dark. As a deterrent to local wildlife, especially coons and black bears, uh, that you do not wish to cohabitate with. For black bears, wave your stick uh, in circles above your head, but using the leather strap, of course, uh, in a helicopter fashion, and yell at the top of your lungs to scare off the bear. Try to avoid profanities. For aggressive or persistent bears, do not run or play dead. Remember, you are in charge, and above all, you have your diamond willow walking stick to protect you. And if the bear is snapping his or her front paws into the ground and snorting, that is your cue to approach him rapidly with a similar aggressive manner, making yourself appear larger by now leaping high into the air and uh, turning your diamond willow stick end for end and swinging rapidly, but in a controlled manner. In reality, remember and be careful not to trip over your stick as you shit your pants and run. <laughs> uh, as you charge, try to, to think of yourself as a Viking berserker and adopt a similar frame of mind. Never show fear. <laughs>five minutes after hitting open water and getting our sails up, we hit a sailor's worst nightmare. No wind. Hmm. That is really weird. You know, coming down that river, that wind was blowing. Uh, well, I guess it was on our nose just as we got here, eh? Yeah. I guess, I guess it's changing to the west. Lucky for us, though, the winds on the North Channel are always changing. And soon we were well on our way to the first destination of our voyage. We're moving now. Yeah, we're doing about five or six knots. But we're controlled, you know what I mean? Yeah. Under control. You don't yeah. want to be out of control. It's like skiing down a steep hill. Yeah. Yeah. Faster than you should. Yeah. <laughs> you know that feeling? Yep. Oh, shit.
as you look around you, this countryside, this channel is untouched and pristine. You can't tell if it's 2011 or at any moment you might see Etienne Brule come around the point in his canoe in 1629. <laughs> so true. Wonderful day on the North Channel. Look at Joe. Complete control of the boat. After several beautiful hours of sailing, it was time to dock at our final destination for the day. The Benjamin Islands. Benjamin Baker was a lighthouse keeper. <coughs> and for three generations, his family looked after that lighthouse that I was showed you today where we saw the waves go up on it. And uh, Benjamin, on Saturdays, used to like to go to Kagawang or Gorbay, which when your sailboat was only, a, I don't know, five miles, ten miles, and on a, and gamble, and have a beer with the boys. So he was gambling and having a beer on this particular night, and uh, he didn't come home. So his family went to look for him, and they found the sailboat floating out of the water, out in the water, with an uh, uh, empty wallet and half a bottle of whiskey, mm. and no Benjamin, and his body's never been found. About a year later, one of the children had a toothache and the bottle of whiskey was up in the cupboard. So that was a good cure for a toothache, was to put a little whiskey on it. So they got the bottle down and they put some whiskey on the kid's tooth and the kid was violently sick and they started sniffing the bottle and it was poison. <laughs> the story goes that somebody had poisoned poor Benjamin and stole his money. <laughs> Threw him in the water. Yeah, and threw him in the lake. With, uh, well, there, it's probably just a story. No, I've been coming here since 1978. How long did it take you to find this place? Oh, uh. I was showing it by some friends. Well, we've arrived here at destination Alpha. After a solid day of sailing, a uh, beautiful, beautiful spot in here. It's uh, probably number one on my uh, favorite places in the world right now. Amazing day of sailing. We had perfect wind. Uh, I got a chance to steer the boat today. It was awesome. Uh, just a solid day. Can't wait for uh, tomorrow. breakfast on the North Channel is a very requires a lot of skill and uh, first of all begins with getting the, a little structure built to hold the uh, grill out of your fridge that's where it comes from you then gather up some beaver sticks and uh, get a nice little fire going and sit yourself upwind light the fire so the smoke isn't blowing in your face when you're cooking then you uh, begin with the North Channel potatoes, which are green. Put some oil in the frying pan. When the grease is hot, 
put the potatoes in. If they sizzle just right, you know you got the temperature just perfect. Brown them carefully, one side and then the other. And remember that what makes potatoes taste good is salt. There's a ton of salt on there. <laughs> Once you have the potatoes done, you get the other frying pan on and put on the uh, bacon. The whole time, stoking small sticks into the fire to keep the temperature just perfect. Put the potatoes and the bacon, when they're done, together in one frying pan. Clean the other one. Put some North Channel water in it. A little bit of grease from the bacon. Put the eggs in and cover them. That's pretty well it. I'll look at you, think you're gonna see this weekend through. I'll look at you, think you're gonna see this weekend through. We can come and I'll be One of the greatest things about sailing, other than the absolute peace and quiet, is the lack of agenda. When you wake up in the morning, you don't really know what you're gonna do for the day but you do know that it falls underneath the realm of a select few relaxing tasks. Sailing, fishing, hiking, swimming, maybe some more sailing, a bit more fishing, and so on. Today, we decided to go for a hike on Fossil Island. So, we're on an island. Uh, this is a very different island. It's uh, made of sedimental, sedimental rock. Uh, it's right full of fossils. It's got all kinds of different squid-like creatures and uh, an era before the fish, as I'm told. And uh, it's fairly early in the morning, a little uh, little chilly bit of a wind, but still a good day, having a good time walking around, checking out fossils. Does it look like a face? of a nautiloid, which is a squid-like creature. Those are uh, clams, oh, one of those. bivalves. Oh, there's a perfect snail, yeah. Gastroid. I often looked at these. I never knew what they were. I thought it was a fish skin or something. Now that that one is in good enough shape to take the book and identify exactly when it, what, which one it was. Well, we just finished cleaning up after our delicious roast beef dinner. Um, Ted's out on the dinghy with Charlie. He's trying to catch the big one. Um, I'm just doing some casting, see what's out here. There's some fish jumping over around there a little bit. Um, beautiful, beautiful sunset right now. Um, Fairly warm, cooling off really quick though. And uh, later on, we're going to be heading over to shore to 
have a campfire and Ted's going to tell us some more stories. So, it's a good time. Okay, you can let her out lots now, Joe. And we have a spinnaker. Sit, Charlie. Good dog, Charlie. Good dog. This is Joe's bling. It's also a piece of wood from a sawmill, specifically John Island. This is the shape of Nessie the Lost Nest Monster. So it might have some spiritual value, I'm not sure, but I wouldn't trust it to save you from, uh, you know, your own foolishness. You make a mistake. His fossil, like your fossil, is from the Silurian era, 420 million years old. You can now witness me blinging Joe with his new North Channel blink. Joe, you've been blinked. <laughs> and doesn't it look handsome on Joe? Oh, yeah. yeah, very, very. And he's at the helm under care and control of all our lives here. After a beautiful and somewhat lazy morning on the water, we set up camp at Hog Island and had a quick lunch before heading out to explore some of the neighboring islands. Fancy little teacup. Wow. Just lay in there. This is what happens to glass when it lays in the sun. It's purple. It's probably off a lantern or something. That one probably sat. wires up to the lighthouse to hold it in place. This is interesting. That didn't burn in the fire. That's uh, copper or brass. There was a big light on the top and it, it wasn't round. It, it was a square piece of glass and another square piece of glass like an octagon, you know? Mm. And it was red. It was at least quarter inch thick, the glass. It's an early Ardox nail. 
when this was glowing red the blacksmith would take this chisel and he just hit into it so you could hit it in but you couldn't take it back out old leather shoe size unknown Here's something interesting. That nail is not real old. That's, you know, way past 1900. So they must have put a little addition on it or fixed it up at one time, you know. Yep. It was a real lighthouse and uh, they burned it in 1963. But it had been there since 1889, the original one. And on the other island, right where the pine trees start, was the lighthouse keeper's building. And he lived in it with his wife, and their names were Mr. and Mrs. Martin. So I uh, did some excavating around there and found an 1859 coin, which was about 30 years old at the time, and had a hole in it, and I'm pretty sure Mrs. Martin wore it around her neck because it was rubbed smooth. We spent four days on the North Channel, but it could as well have been four months and we wouldn't have known the difference. The history and beauty of the place was relaxing, exciting, tiring, and energizing all at the same time. We started the trip bouncing with excitement and anticipation, and left with even more. If you ever have a chance to go sailing on the North Channel, don't even hesitate. It's an experience you'll remember for the rest of your life. Hey, 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 hey.